Welcome everyone to teaching We the People online using Actively Learn with our special guest, Amanda Kropp. Uh, first, we'll go ahead and have a few comments from our new executive director, Christopher Riano. Uh, then we'll hand it over to Robert Lemming, the We the People national director for a few comments. And finally, what you have all signed up for, what you've all been waiting for, is uh, Amanda Kropp's presentation of the uh, We the People, the Citizen and the Constitution uh, Enhanced eBook, uh, Actively Learn Edition. Amanda is a 12th grade government teacher from T.C. Williams High School in Alexandria, Virginia, and she knows the book in and out mm -hmm. and uh, will give a great presentation. Afterward, we'll have some time for questions. Now, just to let you know, this webinar is being recorded. I'll share the recording after the webinar. Um, so if you have questions, uh, go ahead and put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, I'll be monitoring that. And you know, we might uh, ask them during the appropriate time during Amanda's presentation, or uh, if we don't get to it, we'll have them answer them after. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to hand it over at this point to our executive director, Christopher Riano. Christopher. Thank you so much, Mark. And thank you everybody for taking the time tonight to join us from literally all across the country. I'm looking at the chat box and I see that we have people from all the way in California, people from Milwaukee, teachers from Washington, West Virginia, Oxnard, Prescott. Um, so all over the nation, we've all gathered tonight to do something that I think is really special and really important. So I wanna thank everybody, Florida, Rhode Island. I see the names popping up in New Hampshire. I mean, this actually dovetails perfectly with how I look at this because I wanna start by saying thank you to each of you I have to be, you know, I have to start by saying that the work that each of you is doing is so incredibly critical and it's why I'm so glad we're all gathered here tonight. You know, we live in incredible times. Uh, we face many, many challenges as a nation and as a global community. And whether it's looking at some of the recent justice, uh, social justice movements we have, or looking at the way that we've all had to pivot to online learning because of COVID, you are truly the leaders and the day-to-day -day work that is happening to ensure that our youngest you know, citizens, our youngest members of our society are still receiving a critical education at this time. I know many of you are well aware of the book resources we have, and I'm so glad that we have somebody with us tonight who can walk us through some of the e-resources. But when you think about the We the People program, and you think about the units, and especially the concepts that are contained in each of them, like the philosophical and historical foundations of the American political system, or how the values and principles embodied in the Constitution shape American institutions and practices. How does the Bill of Rights protect our rights and our liberties and responsibilities? And how do we look at the challenges we currently face? There's an entire unit on that, and look at what we're doing today. You know, I want to just open this up very quickly and just say thank you. I know how much time each of you is putting into the work that you're doing to maintain our education system. I know that each of you, like ourselves, is looking at the future and thinking, what is school going to look like this fall? What is it gonna look like next spring? And how can I best use the resources that are available to me to ensure the most fundamental education remains a civic education to ensure that the next generation of Americans has a chance to be as civically virtuous as each of you. You know, I really think that there may be no more important time in our program for everything that each of you does. And there may be no more important time to continue to ground our next uh, bunch of Americans in the work that we do. I really truly do believe that the best days of our future are ahead. And so I wanted to open by saying thank you. Thank you to each of you. I'm really, really excited that all of you will have the opportunity to work with an expert this evening and looking at our work on Act Actively Learn. We're all in the moment of a pivot. The Center for Civic Education, just like each of you is pivoting in many ways as well. So thank you, thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. And as always, anything that I or any of us at the center can do, we are here to assist. And uh, thank you again for taking the time. Thank you very much for that, Christopher. Uh, thank you, that, thank you. 
Bob, Robert Lemming is our national director of We the People. Bob, over to you. Well, I've got one thing to say, a big fat ditto. Uh, I couldn't have said it any better than Christopher's done. So I'm, I, although I certainly concur with everything he said, I will take this opportunity to advertise a few things. One, two weeks from now, we are having a webinar uh, at the same time, same night, uh, that's gonna deal with what's happening in our schools generally, uh, school systems, as well as what's happening in your classes. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, to go ahead and sign up for that one. Uh, that'll be uh, mainly, you know, ma uh, mainly teachers. Uh, and then lastly, we are developing right now a series that I'm calling, uh, that we're calling uh, Power to the People. It's a six week webinar series starting September 17th and going for six weeks on various issues, uh, various topics. I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be great for teachers as well as the public. Uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, I think that's a role that the center can play uh, uh, in, in, in these times. And again, I just wanna to say to you as well, thank you for being part of this. This is what being a professional is, uh, trying to figure things out. And, 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 and because you love your students, you're doing this. Uh, so I encourage you to, uh, to decide, think about paper versus online. Uh, I think you're going to have a very interesting conversation tonight, and I don't want to take any more of Amanda's time, so I'll just say have a great night with this. Thank you so much, Bob. We appreciate that. And I, I went ahead and put the link in the chat uh, to an answer Ashley's question. Yes, uh, your We the People kids, your We the People students can, in fact, register and watch these too. Um, we're going to try to keep it to a level that um, you know, like Bob said earlier, that not only you don't have to be a law professor uh, like Christopher Riano to uh, understand these <laughs> these uh, um, principles, uh, the webinar. So go ahead and register. Uh, we'd love to have you aboard. With that, I will turn it over to Amanda Croft. Amanda? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, it's a little interesting. Um, doing this um, in a webinar format where I'm not like in front of anybody. But um, I, did, um, I did just post a link into the chat. Um, I would like you guys to join the Nearpod that I'm gonna go through with you. Um, I'm gonna also, sh um, I also am hoping to share my screen. Um, Mark, I wasn't able to share it. Um, oh, okay. But, um, and I'll share the, um, the Nearpod um, link for you guys to join. You don't have to join if you don't want to because I'll just share the, what, the Sorry, presentation. You, you should be able to share now. Sorry about okay. that. Yeah, no problem. All right, let's get going. There we go. All right, there we go. Have the power. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, so if you guys could just join this Nearpod, um, I see that there's about 17 of you already sort of popping in there. The link in the chat is the easiest. You do not have to create an account in Nearpod. Um, all you will see when you go into the Nearpod is it will just ask you for your name and then you will join the session and you will be in. Um, so I'll give just a couple minutes because I see about 25 of you in there. Again, that's the code for the Nearpod. Um, I'm just gonna teach what's familiar to me um, in a virtual setting. Um, so. And again, the student what version will be, I'm going to share my screen and this will be what the, the students will be seeing or you guys, my students tonight. Uh, right now. All right, so um, more and more of you are joining, but I will just get rolling here. Um, so there's a quick poll. Um, I just want to know how familiar you guys are with Actively Learn as a platform. Um, you can tell me that you're really familiar with it. You're using it with your kids right now. Um, you're somewhat familiar with it, or maybe you've never used it before, which is completely fine because I assume that's why the majority of you are here tonight, which is good. All right, I'll give, I'll give you a couple seconds to answer. And everyone, please do join that, uh, join the Nearpod. Just click on the link uh, in the chat. Uh, this is the interactive portion of the presentation, so 
We require your participation. Go ahead and join that link. Yeah. All right. Yeah, gonna make you do a little bit of work tonight. Not you're just not gonna sit and listen. All It'll right. Be more interesting that way. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> All right, guys. So it looks like um, almost half of you, forty-seven percent, have never used it before. Um, which is great because that's why you're here. Um, and I get to tell you all about it, which is exciting. All right, so um, the way I'm gonna break this down is I'm gonna tell you about all of the teacher tools first, and then I will tell you about sort of the student tools, okay? So when you log on to Actively Learn, this is gonna be the homepage, it's called the Teacher Dashboard. Um, it has everything that Actively Learn contains on it, right? Um, there will be articles, there will be videos, um, they'll categorize them into different topics. The homepage, what I like about it is that it changes um, depending on what's going on out um, in, the, in the world, in the United States, right? Um, so the articles and the videos that are, you will see when you first log on will be reflecting what is currently going on. Um, on the left-hand side, that sidebar that I have in the little red box, that's where you'll see your classes. Um, you do have to create them for the kids to join, um, but that's how you can sort of navigate to all your classes. The big search bar at the top, that will be um, how you find things. So easiest way to do it, you could just do the search bar, um, search for a topic, um, uh, issue, anything you want. Um, you can search by grade levels as well. Um, so right there, those grade levels. You can search by Lexi level um, or by standards. They currently have standards for history and world history, BA history and world history, but they don't have any for GUD yet, but I heard that they're working on those. So hopefully we'll get, get those soon, okay? This is the teacher workspace. Um, so when you click on that, my workspace right there, um, this is anything that you've starred, so you've saved or you've shared with others, it'll be in this workspace. Um, normally when I come across something and I think that looks really great, I just put, I just click the little star. When you're in the actual um, reading or video, there will be the star or this little check um, box in a circle. I just click the star and then it just stays in there for you. Um, the We the People textbook will already be in these folders, right? So the whole book will be broken down. If I wanted to find something in Unit 1, I would just click the Unit 1 folder. Um, same thing for Unit 2, 3. It's just like the textbook, but obviously in the electronic version. All right, so um, move on to what your class homepage and some tools are in there. Um, so when you're in your class, you will see everything that you've assigned to that class, um, whether it's a reading, the video, um, or lessons from the We the People textbook. Um, there's two ways to assign things to the kids for the We the People textbook. You can assign them the entire book, which I do do for all of my kids. Um, I want them to have access to the whole book so they can just find things. Um, or you can just assign individual lessons of the textbook to kids. Um, I've done this with the hearing groups. So um, my unit five group, I would maybe assign them the unit five section of the, of the textbook, but then maybe there's a couple of lessons from unit one or unit two that might be relevant to their questions. So I would also assign them those lessons too. Um, so with the hearing groups, that's where you can do it. Or um, I've done this with the Declaration of Independence. Um, I've assigned them just that lesson, lesson six. Um, I want them just to read the section about the Declaration of Independence, but then I also assign them maybe lesson two where they talk about the natural rights philosophy as sort of like a review, and then they attend um, class and then we talk about what they read. Um, it's sort of how I did it this spring when we had to sort of switch to the remote um, learning. Mark, any questions or do I need to pause? Uh, let's see. We do have we do have a question from uh, Emma Blydenberg. Emma asks, "Is it possible to do the same assignment to multiple classes?" Yes. Yes, yes. it is. So you mm -hmm. can assign the same portion of the book, the same lesson, or, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. to multiple classes. Okay. Yes. And then she says, "Also, once I've edited We the People for last spring, and by the way, you can edit." these lessons, you can go in and uh, change things. Um, 
she asks, once she, you've edited them, will I still be able to have the un, unedited version? Yes. Yes, you will. And yeah. I'll actually get to that. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and then Stacy asks, so the what lessons for the We the People book are pre-created for us? I think, uh, I think maybe. Look, like all the questions that would be, like the questions are in the book. Yeah, the questions, um, yeah, those are, those are in there. Those questions are in there, pre-created, yes, if that's what you mean. And then the lessons from the book, the, the chapters are also in there. Oh, yeah. So that, yeah, then, that lesson um, thir 36 right there that I have highlighted, Bill writes, that is not a lesson I created. That, right. That's, the, that's um, from the book. Mm -hmm. And then Marth, Marta Salazar asks, Mark, how much does this actively, learning, mm -hmm. actively learn cost? Mm -hmm. It's $9 per user per year. And you get access to the entire actively learned social studies, uh, everything in there. So Amanda, I'll let you uh, <laughs> continue. We yep. could just keep going on and on, but I'll let you continue. Thanks. Okay. Good. All right. Some other tools that you can use in the class um, at, for, for each class is, um, so when you click on roster, you will see all of your student names, the kids that have joined. Um, there's the, it's easy to invite the kids. Um, I know that my arrow is sort of covering it, but you can just invite them. It'll be like a URL, um, or you can give them the class code, just like I gave you a code for Nearpod. Um, I obviously erased these student names, um, but I wanted to show you that there's an option called extra help. So what you can do is, if there's a couple kids that maybe you think need some extra help while they're reading, maybe um, the multiple choice questions, you only want them to see three um, answer choices instead of four, or maybe you want to add some extra wording to their question to help them answer maybe an open-ended question. Or maybe you wanna add some notes in the margins just for those kids who need an extra um, help, then you can turn this feature on for them. It's easy to turn on and off, like say if a kid starts in the fall and they need this extra help and maybe by January or the spring they don't need it anymore, you just turn it off. Um, you don't even have to tell the kids that they're getting it. Um, and that way, no, no one will actually know. Um, the grade book um, is great. Um, I, this is two pictures, it's not just one. Um, when you're in the grade book, you can see obviously how the kids are scoring. So you can see the class averages. Um, here you can see the class average total points. You can see it for just these individual assignments like the Declaration of Independence one, the natural rights philosophy lesson that I did. These two, I can see the averages. The other cool thing that you can see is you can also see the learning time. This is how long the kids spent in the reading. So for example, um, I could, or was engaged in the actively learn platform on that assignment. So the class total in this instance um, was eight hours, five minutes, and then the class average was 22 minutes. This was um, a class that I created for the Virginia Civics. I did a PD for them a couple of weeks ago. This was their class. Um, so at that time was a little bit less than probably my kids would be. Um, but you can also see how many times they look upwards or um, how many questions they still have to answer and things like that. The other cool thing that Actively Learn gives you is it gives you data for the class, but it can also give you individual student data. Um, so for example, for this student, you can see their grade, um, where, where, they're, where they're at, um, their reading pace, are they reading the, the assignments too quickly or are they spending a sufficient time amount reading the words per response so if you give them open-ended questions um, are they using too few words or are they using a sufficient amount of words um, the best part about this is that it gives the kids feedback it gives you feedback right to give to the kids that the students should spend more time in their assignments they should use a dictionary they should annotate more you don't have to send this out to the students the students will also see the same page on their end so it's immediate feedback to kids. Maybe this is sort of what you need to work on. Okay. All right, so let's get into how to create an assignment. Um, so again, there are two ways to create an assignment. If This is actually two pictures. Um, if I'm in an assignment, there's a little box right up here in the right upper um, toolbar that says assign. I can then assign it. I can assign it to multiple classes. I can assign it um, to different groups, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, or when you're, see, when you're reading, like when you're searching for things and you see um, something that maybe you want to assign to them, you could just 
click that little box with the circle right away and assign it to them. What I really like about actively learn is you can create duplicate versions of the same assignment. Um, so maybe I want to assign it to two different groups. I want to differentiate the types of questions that I use in that reading. Um, the margin, the notes in the margin, maybe I'm going to make them a little bit different. I can create, maybe I want to create, use, um, I want to create maybe one for period one and then one, maybe another one for period two. Um, the best part is when you edit it, so this one says my instruction, I could, I could change the name to maybe period one. If I'm going through, every assignment will already have notes in the margins and they will already have the questions that are the same ones from the textbook. But maybe I delete a couple of them and I'm like, oh, maybe I want to go back to that um, original version that Actively Learn had set up. All you have to do is click Actively Learn Instruction and it will take you back to that um, original assignment and then you can um, edit it from there. Or you could just use what um, Actively Learn has in, in, in that reading as well without any additions. Um, so you can, when you assign the reading to the kids, um, Ideally, a student could log on to actively learn and they could just find that assignment on their class homepage. Especially looking at the fall, um, and if a lot of us I think are looking at online instruction, I think the biggest thing here is to sort of flatten your course. You need to make, you don't want kids having to click around and look for things. So what, how I do it is I just will use the URL that um, actively learn provides and I will just post that. My um, school district uses Canvas or you could use this with Google Classroom. All you would have to do is just post that URL and then it'll take the kids immediately to that assignment instead of making them log on to the homepage to then click onto the assignment. The other cool thing is you can assign an assignment to just a small group of students. Um, so this, especially for We The People, what you could do is maybe, this takes a little bit of front loading, but you could go through and pick the relevant lessons that tie into maybe unit five's hearing question or unit four, four's hearing question. Um, you could assign it to just the unit five kids or just the unit four kids. Um, it says you can assign the groups randomly, but you could also choose the groups, which is what I've done in the past. All you have to do is just select the groups and it could be unit one and unit two and unit three. Um, because we all know that um, if I'm the unit one hearing group, I'm probably going to use some things um, from the other units as well. Um, you can also choose to assign things to an enti the entire class or just individual students. So maybe you come across um, an article, right? Like, because Actively Learn is not just the We the People textbook. It has tons of articles and videos that are really great and relate to a lot of our um, topics in, in Gov. So maybe you see something and you think, oh, this would be really great for unit three. Um, so you could just assign it individual students to just the unit three group kids, or maybe you just wanna send it to the captain of your unit three group um, and say, hey, look at this. This might be relevant to your um, unit question. Um, so again, you, you can assign things to the entire class or just um, small groups for individual students as well. So some of the assignment tools while you're in them, this is the thing that I think is the most valuable as a teacher um, because you can add notes in the reading. So we all know when we give the kids an assignment, they'll go home, they'll read it. They're not with you. They don't, sometimes they don't know what is, what should be the most important or what they should be focusing on. So what you can do is you can add notes in the margin um, to the kids and say, hey, really think about this. Um, or or does this relate to what you've just read? Um, actively Learn already has some notes in the, in the margins. You can keep them or you can add to them. You can also add an image or a video in the note that you're um, sharing with the kids. And then here, I have it in red, is where you can just share it with those extra help kids that maybe you um, identified. The notes, how it looks, is you can highlight an entire phrase or just a word in the reading. And when the kid reads, they'll see this highlighted um, portion and then they'll be able to see the note in the margin that you've added for them. Um, and it will say that this note was added by Ms. Crop 
and they'll know that that's probably important. I normally add these notes, like especially if what we're reading is something that we're going to talk about the next class. I'll add some notes um, with maybe some questions to sort of um, connect what they're reading to what we're going to talk about. All right, so in an assignment, there are three different types of questions that you can add. Some of these are already in there, um, and some of them, again, you can add um, yourself. So there are multiple choice questions, there are short answer and open-ended questions, and then there are polls. I think multiple choice and the polls are great because again, especially in looking in the fall where we might be doing some remote learning, I can have the kids read something and then in the next class, well, or whenever we have our live Zoom, I can, you can bring up this and, show, and it will show you results. Um, so like in, for this multiple choice question, 92% of the class thought it was this answer. Um, it's an easy way to get, go over as a group um, maybe a question, maybe a lot of them missed it, and maybe we need to talk about it. And this way I'm not calling out individual kids, but we're, we, we can talk about it as a group. Um, I really like the polls, because I add in the polls when, again, it's a reading that I'm having them do for a discussion in the next class. Um, and then again, short, short answer open, they're always great um, as well for good practice. So when, when they get a multiple choice question, I like the multiple choice question because it can give the, the students immediate feedback. Um, so for, um, in this one, I answered it incorrectly so you could see it, um, but it will tell them that it got it wrong and it will show them the right answer. You can always turn this off, but um, these are normally knowledge-based questions, so I don't mind letting the kids see this um, answer immediately, the right answer immediately. But it's a good, but again, it's a good way to have them do little checks while they're reading. All right, so I have a, a poll for you. Um, so which type of question do you think would be the most useful um, for you to engage with your students using the online textbook? Um, do you think it's the multiple choice? Do you think it's the open-ended? Or do you think it's the poll type questions? And while you're answering that, um, I guess, Mark, if there's any questions I can Yes, I do have questions for you. Thank you for asking. Um, so Emma writes, is it possible that kids had to log on to actively learn initially before using the URL? In other words, the, the one that shares the course with them. Students reported that they couldn't get on without logging in. Could be a student error, but was a common concern. In other words, do they have to have a, an account on actively learn before they can participate? The URL when I would send it to my kids, I never heard from my kids that they couldn't get to the assignment. Okay. Um, but they were part of the class, so they had already joined the class, um, which I assume that means that they would have had an account in order to join the class, and then I'm giving them the URL. Okay. So, so maybe that maybe that's um, the issue. Okay. Uh, then Marta asks. Can we PDF print the grades for the entire class as proof of assignment for their portfolios? Have you ever tried that? <laughs> I've never tried that. Never tried uh, that? No. Okay. I've only kept the digital. Okay. Everything online. I wonder, well, does it, does it show you in a, the screen, does it show you uh, maybe a, a summary or something like that of, of, uh, of each student? Because if, if it does, then maybe you could, you know, print that screen. I don't really know myself. I know. Okay. Well, let me, let me just say that Actively Learn has a really good help section. And um, you can also go on their help page and search their um, kind of, uh, you know, knowledge bank, if you will. And I'll go ahead and uh, put a uh, link to the help center in the chat. Yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me just ask you one more question, Amanda, yeah. if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley asked, uh, Amanda, do you link your Google Classroom account or just have a separate class on Actively Learn? In other words, uh, is, it linked, is it linked to Google, the Google Class, or do you not, not use Google Classroom? I don't use Google Classroom. Um, our school district has it. Some teachers do it, but I don't use it. I use Canvas. Right. Apparently, uh, it does integrate with Google Classroom. 
Um, what that mean, what that looks like, I don't have, I don't have details on that, um, but apparently it does integrate. And that comes for free with, uh, with your subscription. That's part of, in fact, if you want, I'll go ahead and, and put this link in the note, notes. Uh, this link shows you everything that comes with, with a subscription. So what you're getting is the premium plan when you sign up, that $9 per user per year gives you access to the premium plan. So if you click on that link, activelylearn.com slash plans, that shows you what comes, comes with that subscription. So over to you again, Amanda. Thank you. So um, it looks like 38% um, who think the poll will be um, most useful, which I, which I agree. The, 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 polls and the polls are really, um, useful, especially um, if we're looking at online learning um, in the fall. All right, so grading tools, which is what we all are probably very interested in. Um, so, when you, so grading multiple choice questions, this is really easy because they're already graded, right? Um, so when you go through them, they'll all, these will be already graded for you when you check these. Um, it will be this big screen though, it will show you the question, um, it will show you their answer to which one they chose. Um, again, I've made sure the quick pick the wrong answer in this one so that you can see it um, where it says incorrect and it would tell you the right answer. Actively Learn does have an option where you can allow the students to revise their multiple choice questions, but I never really use that option because I mean, again, most of them are normally knowledge based. I really just want the kids to have immediate feedback um, on, on just the, the content. The grading open-ended questions though, what I, this is really cool. Um, the way that Actively Learn does this is they set it up so that you can grade them on mastery, right? Um, so right here in the, um, this is a student and they answered um, this question, right? They, they're answering this, the question, the Declaration of Independence states that people have a right to abolish their government. When is the re revolution necessary? Um, so these are the student answers. You can give them a zero, an incomplete, basic, proficient, or advanced. And then you also can give them feedback, right? So if I'm going to grade a kid and tell them that they're that they only received a basic grading, um, then I can give them feedback and I can allow for them to revise this so that they can get up to either proficient or, or advanced, um, whichever one you're sort of striving for your kids to get. Um, again, this is really great for online because you can give feedback and you can do it a little bit quicker than obviously you could do if they were turning a paper into you and you had to grade it and you get it back to them because um, this can be immediate. The nice thing too about the open-ended questions, if they are one that the Actively Learn platform or the We the People textbook already has in it, like you didn't create it, they will also provide a model response for that answer. Um, so that can sort of help you when you're grading and trying to give the kids feedback. You can create open-ended questions, but again, if you create an open-ended question, it's not gonna have that model response um, box. So assign the data. Um, so if I'm in an assignment and I want to see some data on how the kids did, um, again, I took all the kid names out of this, but you will be able to see the time, so how long they spent in that assignment. Um, the students in this case were my um, Virginia Civics um, We the People teachers. So again, I do have some that um, didn't do anything. Um, hopefully you would see more students participating. Um, than, than adults, um, but like the first student only spent 10 minutes. Um, There's a student who spent seven minutes, a student who spent 27 minutes. Um, so again, um, if the kid says that they went through and they, and they, they still didn't understand something, you say, oh, well, look, you only really spent seven minutes. You probably should take a little bit more time to read it. Um, you will be able to see their data on all their questions. So, which, so there were five questions in this case, um, which ones they got right, which ones it's red if they get it wrong. Um, it's gray if they haven't answered it yet. Um, none of the participants in this um, class did it, but you will also see here if a kid looked up a word, like vocabulary, if they translated a word, you would see that data. Um, and then you can also see the data on your short answers. So how many of them are scoring advanced? How many of them are in the proficient? How many of them are in the basic levels? Um, again, lots of great data so that you can see your kids are doing. Okay. Amanda, can I ask you a question? Yes. Aaron asks, could you detail, and I have some, some thoughts on this too, but could you detail how you might integrate a state or national level We the People prompt, in other, in other words, a question 
for ongoing grading through multiple drafts. Have you ever had your kids answer a question that they might have to revise? And Aaron's in particular talking about the we the people, you know, state level questions, for example. Um, how would you handle that personally? So like the draft of their um, so like, their yeah, testimony? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. The draft of their testimony. They're, so they're answering a question, unit one question, let's say. Uh, how would you handle that? Like with the, but with the book? With the We with, the People book? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess so. Um, there's no built-in way to do that in Actively Learn, right? Right. Um, yeah, I would be doing that in Google, like in, you do like that in Google, Google Docs. Like, like a Google Doc. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the answer, Aaron. Um, there's no built-in way, so they don't they don't really have a, you know, you could always add an assignment, like an open-ended question, but there's no way to to have them work on the same question at the same time and go through multiple drafts in in the book itself. But we've actually had you know, we've had some conversations with Hackley Learn about this, but at the moment, um, at the moment, there's no, no way to do that. Um, but I would just handle it through um, like a Google Doc. Uh oh, Robert Lemming's on the scene. We're, we must be in trouble. <laughs> I know, I think this is a very important question that, answer, uh, that Aaron's asking. Uh, it's very timely because we're working on the state level questions right now. So if you can, Amanda, spend a little bit more time on, and I think teachers ought to think about this, since there is no platform on actively learn to actually put kids in groups and have them edit their own questions, uh, the hearing questions as they prepare for their district and state competitions. So it, it needs to be done in some kind of Google Doc fashion, I guess, so that kids can work on each, each, each uh, in units. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's how I would do. I would, I would just recommend using a Google Doc. All right, um, and then Pat asks, what grade levels is Actively Learn slash We The People set up for? Well, we're, right now it's high school and middle school, but coming August 15th, we will also have elementary school. So just to clarify, if you pay $9 per user per year, you can get um, access to all three levels of the book. Not that, you're gonna, not that you teach all three levels, but you might have a reader who needs uh, the lower level, like the very similar lesson but in the lower level of the book, like you might assign the middle school book to them, uh, a lesson from the middle school book. Uh, so um, Amanda, thank you so much. And I will turn it back over to you. All right. And thank, thank you those of you that were answering the question, um, the open-ended question um, that I was asking you with how could actively learn with their grading tools, how could that help you and your students? Um, a lot of you are saying that it would save time grading, um, really liking the feedback, which I agree with. I think that is the most useful tool um, with, with this. All right, so um, some distance learning tools. Um, so going back to that testimony question, though, because that is like, how are we going to do um, the, the testimony um, and getting these kids ready? Um, Actively Learn has this option where kids can actually take their own notes while they're reading, right? <coughs> um, so they can be reading the book, and they can add their own notes. So you've added notes for them, but they can also add their own notes. Um, they can choose to make these notes private or they can choose to share them with the rest of the class. No matter what they choose, private or share with the class, you as the teacher get to see them all. So in this um, assignment, if I went to it, um, there would be a box where it says all shared notes. You would click it and it, you would actually see all the students um, that added notes and then you could click on their name and you would see the notes that they added in that reading. The cool thing is, is if you remembered, I said that you could assign an assignment to just a small group, right? So if I assigned a group to just a unit one hearing group, I would say, I want you guys to go through, maybe I'm gonna assign you, a, I need to see a certain number of notes um, from you guys, where you're adding notes in the margin that, that uh, things you're reading that are relevant to the um, hearing question, maybe they're relevant to part one, of question one, or maybe they're relevant to part two of that question one, or relevant to part three. But they go through and you can have them add notes. So they don't actually have to be physically together to do this. They could all be reading the same assignment and adding notes and letting each other see them um, to sort of help um, 
with that research part of the um, of the um, of getting ready for the hearing. Um, so again, I've done this before where again, I just said go through. Um, this is also really useful too, because if you go through and you expected them maybe to add a note in one of the paragraphs and no, none of the kids added a note, you can maybe add your own note and say, hey guys, um, maybe you should revisit this paragraph that might be useful for um, your hearing question. Amanda, yeah. um, Adam asks, uh, he says that you've mentioned that you sometimes assign the entire book. So is this issue of assigning the entire book versus lessons or individual mm -hmm. portions. Did she assign the entire book for course long reference and then reassign individual lessons as she came to them in the curriculum? Yes, yes. Um, I wanted the kids to have access to the entire book um, because they need it, um, because they need to be working on their hearing questions and sometimes we're not in those lessons. And so, yes, so I would have the book just so it was there for reference so they all could see it. But then, yeah, I would assign the individual ones when we were going over them so that um, I didn't have to tell them to go look in the book and find this chapter. I just want them to be able to get to it quicker. Okay, so you can you can give them access to the entire book and then just assign individual portions of it. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Another um, useful tool for distance learning in the fall. Um, I've never used this, um, but Actively Learn does have this option where if everybody is in the same reading, so if I'm teaching a class with you and maybe I tell you all, I, we're all in this reading, right? This, this was, um, I think, from lesson six. Um, and we all do this. We all do readings with kids and we say, okay, now everybody, we're looking at paragraph two and sentence three, and it's gonna start with, um, since the close of the last war, right? You don't have to do that and actively learn. If they're all in the reading, all you as the teacher have to do is maybe I want all of you to join me at this highlighted portion. So you highlight a portion and then there's an option where you can say move students here. No matter where they're at in the reading, it will move all the kids to that section that you have just highlighted. Um, again, I've never used it, but I think it would be really useful this fall, um, especially if you're using the book in say like a live Zoom or a live class and obviously the kids are at home, you're at home and you're not all together in one um, part. Or if you're actually with kids, um, then you could still maintain, I guess that's that six feet because you wouldn't actually have to go point at their paper because they, you all could just be on your computers. All right, so let's see. Okay. So I am asking you guys, um, as a teacher, which tool um, do you think you find the most valuable? So out of all the things that I sort of just talked about, um, again, I wanted to sort of give you guys some process time um, before we switch over to the student tools. All you have to do um, is just go here down here where it says share thoughts and or images and then you post it. Amanda, I really love this feature of Nearpod. Uh, <laughs> that's great. We get to see your responses coming up. Very and creative I, way to show this. I am, and, I, and Mark, I did change it where I am proving them. Um, Excellent. And, and yeah, and it's going just as fast. But yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of you guys are saying that you like the feedback, um, tracking. Yeah, I'm glad to see that a lot of you are saying the feedback because again, that's what I think is the most um, useful to as a teacher. All right. Well, then we will move in to my sort of my more my favorite part is student tools, um, just because they're so exciting. Um, so you can see the stu student tools. You do have to sort of switch modes um, when you're on that teacher dashboard. What you do is you go up into the upper right hand corner where your name is. And you're going to click on the little drop down menu and there's going to be an option that says switch to student mode. Um, so you will, you will have to click that um, in order to see sort of what I'm going to show you next. Um, as a student, you can join, you can then see a class homepage. So again, remember I told you that the students will see all everything that you've assigned to them. 
um, that's why I think it's more useful to give them that URL in maybe your learning platform and just say, log on to actively learn and find this. Um, you could even join the class yourself, like your period one or your period two, so that you could see what the students are seeing. Um, doesn't matter. Um, but so I joined this one. Um, this was one I did for Virginia Civics a couple weeks ago. Um, I joined this as a student as well, so I could just show you what it looks like. Um, again, remember I told you about that, da that data page. Um, you don't have to, as a teacher, you don't have to send it out to the kids. They immediately see it when they click on the little button that says my data. Um, they see the recommendations about their grade, about their reading pace, words per minute, or words per response. So in the assignment, they have some tools as well. So whenever they're in assignment, this will be the toolbar that's at the top of whatever they're reading or watching. The first tool they have is text settings. So the kids can actually change the margins and spacing. They can change the text size. They can make it bigger or smaller. Um, they can change the font. And one of the fonts that they actually can choose is a dyslexic setting, um, if that applies to them. They can also change the theme, which basically just sort of changes the color um, of the background. So they can sort of customize the reading um, however they see fit. The next tool that's really cool is a read aloud. So what the students can do is it says little, little play button. They can actually have the option to have the entire reading read to them. Um, there's also options with this. They can choose what voice they want. So um, it's sort of like a GPS where there's a male and a female voice um, for every language. They can choose multiple languages, but here's the kick. Um, if the reading is in English, it will read it in English. It won't read it in a different language for this tool. Um, like the Spanish voice will just sort of read it with a Spanish accent. Um, they can choose the reading speed, so whether they want it to be really slow or really fast, and then they can also choose whether they want the words to be highlighted while they're spoken. Uh, I see you, I see you up, coming up. Um, would you like to say, add anything? I just, this is my favorite feature because you can put it in, in a British accent uh, <laughs> and, and, and read it to you. So it's, it's kind of fun to just try that out. It is, yeah. Um, but it, it reminds me a lot of like a GPS um, in that instance. All right, so the, the other cool tools that students have is they can choose to translate something, hear it, or define it. So for this, this was the reading and I highlighted the word endeavored. When they highlight something, a box will pop up. They can highlight and take a note of it. Um, they can hear it. So it'll just read that word aloud for them. I find this really useful, especially for those like legal terms that we always come across that maybe a kid is a little bit unsure of how, how to say it. Um, they can get a definition so they can define it. The translate option, this is um, another cool option where the students can choose to just have one word translated, so endeavored, if they need endeavored translated, they can translate it into a ton of languages. Um, and then that's what, that's it translated into Spanish right here. Or what they can do is they can actually highlight an entire paragraph and they can have an entire passage translated for them as well into a ton of different languages. Um, again, that takes some time, so it's not like the read aloud, but they, the translate option is there if they need that. Um, so note taking, this is sort of like, uh, I sort of already talked about this a little bit when we were talking about adding notes, um, but students can add notes while they're reading. Um, the way I have them do this is they can select categories. Um, Actively Learn already has a bunch of categories pre-established um, in there, but I tell them that I want, I want them to go into the custom ones and maybe I tell them that you're looking for maybe something to answer question one, um, part, the part one of your question one, or part two of question one of your hearing question, right? Um, and so they can customize that and say, um, question one, part one, or question one, part two, um, as they're adding those notes. Um, again, they can choose to share it with the class or make it private, but no matter what, you as the teacher, you will get to see that. All right. So, as you guys are answering another poll for me, um, which of these do you think will be most useful to your students? They hear it, define it, translate, or highlight, and take notes. Um, I guess, Mark, if there's any other questions. 
Oh, well, um, okay, so we've got this setting called use dyslexic settings that's, um, that's gotten a lot of play in the chat room. Apparently, um, apparently it works. Ashley says the font really does work for dyslexic students. I've used it for those students and it really makes a difference for them. It also translates text into literally a ton of different languages. True, just like Bob, I can't resist. I have to mess around with that stuff too. Um, you can read, you know, you can have the, uh, the declaration in Icelandic if, if you need that. Um, so let's see. Uh, Aaron says, well, Aaron says, that's so cool. How well does the grammar in other languages? I assume they're all professionally translated. Actually, Aaron, this, this, is, a, this is done by a machine. This is done by... Um, I, can, I think this one might be Microsoft's AI translator. It's like a, a plugin that um, Microsoft has developed. Microsoft, Google, and some other uh, vendors have developed these automatic translation software. As far as how good they are, I can't really say. <laughs> I, I, I really only speak English and marginally. Uh, so anyway, thanks. Thanks, Amanda. That's all the, oh wait, there's another one. Let me see. Um, okay. Hmm. That's, that's it. Let me just, I have to read this other one. It's pretty long, but thanks. Back to you, Amanda. Well, um, yeah, so looks pretty spread out. Um, which one do you guys think um, will be best for your students? But um, that's really it. Um, those were all the student tools. Um, thank you guys for listening and um, on the Nearpod. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen in a sec in a minute, but um, if there's a question that didn't make it to the chat, but um, you need to, to ask it, um, go ahead, throw it in there, and then I will be sending that to Mark. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amanda. Um, that was very, very illuminating. You are an expert, so I <laughs> really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> So uh, everybody, if you have, we are seven minutes before the stopping point, our scheduled stopping point. If you have additional questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat or put them in Q&A. Um, Lance mentioned, um, you know, he can see the value of, of actively learn, but his state approved deep budget cuts uh, in the education um, budget. And I think this is something we're hearing quite a lot and probably more. Um, I'm sorry about that, Lance. Uh, I don't know, you know, I don't think Actively Learn themselves would want to lobby uh, your school district. Well, they, you know, they, they're everywhere. They have a sales force. So, um, you know, maybe they could, they could make some headway there. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I wish we could provide this for free for everyone. But at the moment, uh, there is a fee. Um, so... Uh, let's see. So Aaron asks, uh, Aaron asks about troubleshooting. He asks if you would be open to mild troubleshooting, but I don't want to put Aunt Amanda on the spot, Aaron. Uh, you can always I, email me. Yeah, you can email Mark. Um, or I threw my email in the chat as well. Um, oh. I'm, I'm fine with that. If you, you need anything. Amanda, <laughs> That is above and beyond. Um, I think I saw one question about that said that we need our students trained to use this. I agree. Um, the PowerPoint that I shared with you, I it, it was tweaked a little bit for um, teachers, but I mean, the student tools, that section is what I normally do with my kids. Um, do it at the beginning of the year, say, hey, we're gonna use this platform. Um, this is how it sort of works. Um, we spend it like a day just going over it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, they do, uh, you know, Actively Learn, I know, offers training. They can bring the entire school in. I mean, bring themselves into your entire school, all, all your classes and, and train everybody, but there's a fee for that. I am willing to help, um, uh, you know, you in any way you want. Uh, feel free to email me. Um, let's see. Uh, Mark asks, any advice on introducing Actively Learn and Nearpod to students? I'm moving from being a traditional textbook 
based middle school teacher to fully online for my district. A lot of people are probably in that same boat. Any advice, any general advice for Mark? So I'm thinking um, at the beginning of the year this year, I think I'm gonna probably have to do some small group meetings sort of at the beginning and sort of say, hey, this is sort of what we're gonna use this year. Um, this, is how, this is how I'm gonna post assignments. This is how we're gonna do lectures. I'm thinking that that will, it'll, it'll take some time, I think at the beginning of the year, but I think that that will um, pay off in the long run, especially if it's gonna be online. Okay, and then uh, uh, let's see. There's several other lessons. Uh, Kevin asks, um, there, are, there were several other lessons besides the We the People lesson. Are we able to create original lessons in Actively Learn that could be assigned to our students? Yes, you can import your own materials as well. Into Isn't that Active amazing? Learn. Isn't that amazing? You can import stuff, including videos, right? You can import videos like from YouTube or, or from somewhere, and then you can ask questions during the video. For example, yeah. there's stopping points, right? Yeah, I didn't show you any of the videos, um, but it's just sort of like Edpuzzle, um, or yeah, you can have a video, the kids will watch it, it will stop them, and it'll ask them a question, and you get the same data as well. Great. Uh, okay, Bob Lemming. Marta, uh, yeah, did you I see saw, Marta's question? Yes, I did. Uh, so I thought I would address that one. Okay. Uh, I would suggest teachers be in contact with their state coordinators about what they're going to do in the fall. I can tell you that a lot of them have already contacted me about doing some sort of online state competition or regional competition. Uh, I, uh, I know everybody is hoping for some sort of live event, but I like to say that, uh, you know, what We The People does is the opposite of social distancing. We bring kids together, and I'm not sure that's a smart idea this fall. Uh, in fact, I've heard from from teachers that that school systems are canceling field trips and so forth. So, I, I, my bet is that most states will probably have some sort of online version using Zoom. I can tell you from our own experience of conducting the national finals challenge with 30 classes, with some of the the teachers that are on here can testify to, it went off great. Uh, the kids were great. The judges were great. Uh, so. I think that, that, that uh, uh, you know, the states were going to have to figure that out. We're obviously helping them out uh, with how to do it and so forth. Uh, the question you, I think you should be asking your state coordinator is, how many of the three state level questions in each unit are, is going to be required in your state for competition? I think that is an interesting discussion to have. You know, we write three per unit but whether or not a state's gonna use all three is really gonna be up to the states and, the, and you and the teachers. I think they need your input on what's reasonable this year to require students to do in terms of, of three, two, or one. Uh, that's gonna be a state decision. Uh, states are gonna differ on that. Uh, I, I can tell you that right now, uh, I'm planning for a 2021 national finals. I'm planning for two. Uh, one possibility would be on Zoom. The other possibility is going back to live. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I think no one does. Uh, but uh, in, in my mind, I'm looking at both of those as possibilities. I don't think that's going to happen this fall in terms of the state competitions. Uh, I would be interested to see if anybody's going to try a live uh, version of it. So again, contact your state coordinator about what's happening in your state in terms of your state competition. And if you don't know who that person is, you can go to our website, click on the We The People map uh, on, the front, on the front page and then find out who your state coordinator is and then touch base with them about what's going on if they haven't told you already. Absolutely, thank you for that, Bob. I'm gonna put in, if anyone wants to know how to order um, the book, uh, you just email us sales at civicad.org. And then once again, we have a follow-up to this webinar, Bob. And I'm putting the link in again right now. This is called Meeting the Challenge of Teaching in a Brave New World. Um, go ahead and sign up. Uh, we've got about 50 some odd people signed up so far, but if you're interested in that, uh, we continue this conversation on August 5th. Uh, any other questions? We have a lot of thank yous in the chat and I would just thank you so much, Amanda. This has been extremely valuable. And Christopher oh. Brown is back on the screen as well. Mark, I would, I would mention that yeah. everybody has access 
to all of these features still for free until July 31st. Yes, that is correct. I'm going to find that link and I'm going to put it in here. And uh, yeah, I, I highly encourage all of you just to go on and try it out uh, and uh, see if it, it's a solution that might work for you. We do have We The People um, available as a, you know, a, a Kindle book and a, um, an iBook, but not, you know, obviously they don't have the, few, those are just flat books. They're just like regular books. This has a lot more. You can do a lot more with it. So perfect for these distance learning times when we're all trapped in our houses, whether we like it or not. Anyway, any more questions? I don't see any more questions in the chat. So I think we can wrap it up. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'm going to be posting this recording uh, within 24 hours and you can all just watch it to your heart's content. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, any final words, anyone? Bob, Amanda? I'm good. Christopher, you want to say something? I'm just very grateful for everybody who came this evening, and thank you especially to Amanda for taking the time Absolutely. to help everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Amanda. I really appreciate that. You have been so helpful, um, and I, I think we all got a lot out of this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I hope so.